Hi, I'm Lisa from Australian Travel and Migration blog DreamingofDownEnder.com. Today I'm going to run through some of the differences between houses in the UK and houses in Australia. I grew up in the UK but I've also house sat in around 100 homes in Sydney over the last few years and I've noticed quite a lot of differences between homes in each country. There will be variations across Australia because the climate varies so much but these are the things I've noticed in Sydney homes. I've also written a blog post on this which I'll link below. If you're interested in moving to Australia from the UK or vice versa, here's what to expect in your new home. So the first difference between houses in Australia and the UK is that in the UK you tend to have a whole row of houses along a road that have the same design repeated over and over, whereas in Australia you can have every house on a road being completely different. And I think this is due to people buying land in Australia and then having a home built on it rather than people buying existing homes like they do in the UK. Some of the older housing in Australia is repetitive, like the old terraces and federation homes that you have in Sydney, but generally you've got a really wide variation of housing styles along the same street. Another difference is that houses in Australia usually have a veranda across the front of the house, and this creates shade across the front window, and it's also quite a nice feature because people put chairs and benches on them that face out into the street. In the UK it's more common to have a front porch if you've got space, so this is just a small glass room on the front of your front door basically where you store shoes and umbrellas and things but they do get quite hot if they're in the sun so it wouldn't really work in Australia. If you look up at the roofs on Australian houses you'll see that the eaves overhang the house much more than in the UK and this creates shade against the windows. In the UK the eaves are really small and you get as much light as possible against the windows and as much warmth from the sun. The windows themselves are different between Australian and British homes so in Australia in the older homes you'll often have wooden frames, sash windows and in the newer homes you'll have big metal frames around your windows and they'll slide open sideways rather than opening outwards. In the UK you have nearly always double glazing which you don't seem to have in Australia and you normally have the thick plastic frames and windows that open outwards. You also have a layer of mesh which is called a screen over Australian windows so that when you open them flies and insects can't come in. In Australia it's really common to have a screen door which means that when you open your front or back door you have a second door next to it which is usually made of mesh and that just means you can keep the door open and have the breeze coming through but no insects can come in as long as you keep the screen door closed. In Australia it's really common to have a separate laundry room or utility room for your washing machine. In the UK, unless you've got a large house, you normally have to have your washing machine in the kitchen. I don't think I've ever seen that in Australia. Sometimes in older flats they might have a communal laundry, but most of the apartments I've been in have had a separate laundry room inside the apartment. In Australia it's really common to have open plan houses, so that the living room, dining room and kitchen are all basically one open room, whereas in the UK your kitchen is nearly always separate and then your living room and dining room sometimes are knocked through, but it's normally separate rooms. In Australia it's much more common to live in a bungalow or a one-storey house than two-storey houses whereas in the UK bungalows are quite scarce and usually something that older people go for because they don't have stairs. If you do have a two-storey house in Australia it can get really really hot up on the second floor if you don't have aircon. In the UK you have a letterbox on your front door so basically a little hole in your front door whereas in Australia you have a standalone letterbox that's out facing onto the street. One of the biggest complaints that I hear from expats in Australia is how cold the houses get in Australia in the winter. So since Australian houses are built to stay cool, they're very often much colder inside than a British house would be in the same temperature. So generally in the daytime, it's colder inside the house in Australia than outside, whereas in the UK it's the opposite. It's nearly always warmer inside your house than outside. One house I stayed in, it had a plug-in heater that had the temperature on and when I woke up in the mornings it was usually about 9 degrees inside. So having central heating throughout your house is really rare in Australia and if people do have it, it's usually through air vents rather than the radiators on the wall like we have in the UK. What some houses have in Australia is a standalone gas heater that's attached to a gas pipe either coming out of the floor or the wall. You can also buy small oil heaters in Australia that you plug in if you just want to heat at one room. Having a fire on the wall in the living room isn't very common in Australia. I have seen it in a few houses but very few compared to the UK. Some of the older houses in Australia quite often have chimney breasts and really nice original fireplaces but they're not really used as much as they are in the UK. Obviously aircon is more common in Australia than in the UK but not as many houses have it in Sydney as I expected actually. 
So looking at the back of the houses, in Australia it's also common to have a veranda on the back of the house as well as the front. Or if you don't have a veranda there's usually some kind of solid covering that shades the patio. Whereas in the UK you would rarely have a covering over your patio, you'd try and get as much light and heat as possible. Conservatories also don't seem to exist in Australia, so this is basically an extension on the back of your house that's usually made of glass. And these are really common in the UK but I don't think that would be possible in Australia with the heat. Having a swimming pool in your back garden is obviously much more common in Australia than it is in the UK. It's not as common as I thought it would be actually, although I would think going further north where it's hotter is probably more common to have a swimming pool. The bathrooms in Australia are quite different to in the UK. So in the UK you can't have plug sockets in your bathroom normally and in Australia you always have plug sockets. This is apparently due to some difference with the electrical systems in Australian houses that means it's safe to have sockets in bathrooms where it can get wet. Also the light switches are different in Australia so in the UK in your bathroom you always have a pull cord so that you don't have to touch a switch if you're wet and in Australia it's just a normal light switch and they also nearly always have fans in the bathroom, so you'll have a switch with a light on, the fan on, and occasionally also a heat switch where you have heated light bulbs. This is a strange little difference, but in Australia the side of bathtubs are nearly always solid, so they're quite often tiled, whereas in the UK you tend to have a plastic panel. And I remember an Australian friend saying that she went to Wales and found this really strange because she'd never seen that before. Also sinks in Australia, you nearly always have a cupboard underneath a sink in the bathroom, which we call a vanity. In the UK, it's more common just to have a sink on a stand. In Australia, they also have a few differences with household terminology. So what we call a sofa or a settee in the UK, Australians would call a lounge. And what we'd call a lounge or a living room in the UK, Australians would call the lounge room. Also, Bedding and towels, in Australia they call this Manchester, which is meant to be from the olden days when cotton items had to be imported from Manchester in the UK. Also a duvet is called a doona in Australia, they do use the word quilt as well though. A flat or apartment in Australia is called a unit. So in Australia you can sit on a lounge, in the lounge room, and then go and get under your Manchester and your doona. Thanks for watching, let me know in the comments if there are any differences that I've missed. Please like and subscribe for more videos on life in Australia.